This episode of this Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey is brought to you by energy healer Jean Borders' personal powerful transformation program. Know you're leaving money on the table but can't figure out how to bring it in? Need to double your productivity and profitability? Need an extra push to get things moving in the right direction? Visit www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com slash transformation now and apply for a business consultation with Jean. Welcome to the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Prepare to feel a sense of relief and empowerment as we get rid of the baggage you've been carrying that's held up your business success up until now. Be sure to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, lean in, get comfortable, and prepare to take off. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Jean Border, with another episode of the Focus Practical Dreamer's Journey. I have a special guest with me here today. I met her a few months ago now, I think. She's just such a cool person that I had to invite her on. So you guys get to meet Christy Rafino. Hi, Christy. Hi, Jean. I am so happy to be with you today. Yeah, we met, oh gosh, yeah, almost two months ago already. Yeah, time. Crazy how time flies, huh? <laughs> so Christy is a Profitize Your Purpose coach, which is a really cool title, but you need to talk to me about that. What does that mean? Ooh, uh, well, do you want me to go into my whole story? Because it's really about helping uh, entrepreneurs who want to do something or basically anybody that really wants to uh, kind of switch gears from what they were doing. Maybe they had a job. Maybe they were um, you know, stay-at-home mom, you know, they were spending the majority of their life helping other people succeed, and they wanted to uh, kind of figure out what their purpose was, and they wanted to build a profitable business around that. And so I have a, a story of how I got to that, but it's really helping people hone in on their kind of like their unique mission in the world and move forward in a way that helps people and helps themselves. That's cool. Yeah, so well, how did you get from where you were to where you are? That sounds like there's a whole backstory there. Oh, uh, funny you should ask, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I'll give you like the the, the condensed version. Um, so 20 years ago, I promise it's not going to take that long. I'm not <laughs> going to go through every single year. Um, but 20 years ago, I found myself in a very difficult situation where uh, my fairy tale marriage ended and I had to figure out how to support myself. Um, it was a very messy situation. Um, and I, up until that point, had, had just been helping my husband have the business of his dreams. And so when I went to go look for a job, I was really not having a lot of luck, but I did find um, somebody that trusted me, brought me in, um, and that was an amazing experience. And on that journey, somebody, uh, well, basically on that journey, um, I knew I needed to get clients. So I started a networking group, a small group, and that group turned into multiple chapters all over multiple states. It was this huge organization. And then about 10 years into that, somebody asked me to share my story, how I was able to go from near bankruptcy to have a thriving organization and a really successful business. And my first re my first response was, no, who wants to hear my story? Um, but I did say yes. And then it kind of embarked me on the journey to recognize the power of story and help other people leverage story in their businesses and in their lives as well. It's very interesting. And I hear this quite frequently, that divorce is a great motivator. I, well, tragedies tend to be a great motivator, right? Um, because sometimes we just coast through life or we feel that you know, everything is great, but there may be something in the back of our mind that we feel we're missing. And when we're forced to take action, sometimes, even though at the time we may not like it, um, but sometimes it gets us to get outside of our comfort zone um, and kind of forces us sometimes to change our mindset or just take action that we can look back later and say, oh, I get it. Now I know why that happened. It wasn't fun at the time, but now 
I see how it expanded my life to be uh, like to help me be so much bigger and better. So you started a networking group. I did on purpose. I did. Yeah, and, and, and the group? one little chapter, one little chapter because I needed clients. I needed. I'm an introvert. I know we have that in common. We were talking about that beforehand. Um, and I was in a sales capacity, and I had to go out and get clients, and it was the most horrible experience every day when I had to uh, go out and network, right? I had to talk to strangers. <laughs> strangers. I mean, I remember as um, uh, in high school, I would hide under the bleachers for speech class. You know, I just wasn't one of those people that liked the attention on me. And so talking to people wasn't comfortable, but I heard about the concept of a, a leads group where I built relationships with people. They got to know my business and then referrals would just pass organically through relationships. And so that one chapter was so successful. We had a waiting list and we ended up by just kind of like birthing more chapters. And, um, you know, honestly, I don't know when this is going to air, but in about two weeks, I'm actually officially finally cl closing down that organization after almost 21 years. Um, COVID wasn't very kind to the in-person networking, especially in Illinois, where we're based out of. Um, the other, some of the other states did well, and we still have a few chapters, but it is, um, I've realized that's not my purpose anymore. And so um, I've done everything I can to help the current chapters keep going on their own. And now I'm focusing on other things. The sad, it's a sad decision, but I believe that I know that it is, a, it's what I need to do to allow me to expand into more. Life is a journey. It's not a one point and this is it. Nope. So you had a really good ride. I did. With that networking group. And now it's time for your journey to veer onto another path. It, yeah. I felt like that it was kind of my baby. I created it. Um, I still have so many amazing uh, people that I've met through that, um, created it from scratch. And I mean, even my license plates, on my car and my motorcycle say DPWN for Dynamic Professional Women's Network. That was my life. Like it was all consuming. I spent morning and night dedicated to helping it become more successful. And over time, you know, my focus went elsewhere. But in the back of my mind, I kind of still feel like it's my little little baby that I've got mm -hmm. and I'm letting go, but it's okay. It's great. I still, you know, I'm not letting go of the relationships I've built. And so I'm guessing that you're moving more into the world of story. Uh, story and business coaching. Yeah, absolutely. Helping people live their purpose. Um, you know, as a networker, it was amazing to help people get more clients. But um, at, even then, there were so many people that were in businesses that didn't light them up. And I, you know, my mission is to help everybody be in a business that lights them up, that they're super excited about. And they feel like that they're, doing what they were created to do. I just, I, I probably said this before, but last week I had a conversation with someone around the same type of thing. Okay. What lights you up? Yes. And when the joy goes away in what you're doing, how do you pivot? Or how do you mm. either get it back or find something else that lights you up the same way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, sometimes it is a matter of getting it back because sometimes we can reinvent or maybe reaffirm why we're doing what we're doing. But other times we just have to come to the realization that it is time to move on. And that doesn't mean it's a bad thing, right? We, we, we can close one door and open another better door. And, you know, that's what we need to do. That's how we need to look at it. It's everything that happens in our life is happening for a reason. We just need to embrace it and uh, see how we can make the best of it. And knowing yourself and your strengths and your weaknesses and what lights you up. And I'm going to use this term, what sucks the life out of you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there are things in my business that suck the life out of me, you know? And so finding people who light up when you talk about those things that you're like, oh my gosh, no. And they love it. Sometimes that's what you need to support your growth. Yeah. Just keep control of your business, but farm out the parts you don't like, right? Oh, totally. Right. No, I mean, as an entrepreneur, we, we're not going to be good at everything. Sometimes we need to do everything or at least learn how to do everything so we can outsource it properly. But 
Yeah, we need to do what we are designed to do, step into our genius zone and then bring others on board that are doing their genius zone to support you. Obviously, that's something that I'm going through in my head. I know. <laughs> and that's the turn. Sorry. Okay. It's starting to get warm in here. The sun is coming through and it's a little toasty. So apologize for that. Turning the fan on. Cool. So talk to me now about now that you're winding down the first part of your journey, how are you growing into this next part? What is that going to look like? And how are you getting from where you were to where you're going? Oh, yeah. So it's been a transition. Um, about 10 years ago, that's when I started diving into the story piece. And um, about two years ago, I started into the coaching because I realized that many, I basically for 11 years, I've been helping women uh, share their stories in co-authored books. So that way they can have a book easily, more economically and faster than writing their own book. And many of them went on to do their own book, of course. Um, but what I recognized and what I saw was that so many of the women that I worked with realized their mess became their mission. And they wanted to build a business around that. They just didn't know how. And then I just kind of sent them to figure it out. And many of them never took action. Um, but now the one, the women that I'm working with are taking amazing action and they are uh, getting great results. They're making transformations in the lives of others. And they're texting me almost every week. I'm getting a couple of times a week. I'm getting texts from people about another client they got. And it's just really neat to see them take a idea and turn it into a profitable business. Their mess becomes their mission. Give me some ideas what that means. Ooh, what wow. mess can become a mission? Yeah, well, so our story, uh, our, our tragedies can set us on a path to uh, figure out what our purpose is. And our pain can become our purpose. Our pleasure can become our purpose. Uh, but the bottom line is we want to bring out the story that um, helps our ideal client recognize that we understand what they're going through. And so our story is what makes us different than anybody else that does what we do. So then it's really important to, uh, if you have a messy part of your life and you realize that that is why you're doing your business, um, bring that story into it so um, the, your audience or your future clients can realize that you can help them turn their mess into their mission as well. And at least basically, get through their mess a little easier because you went through it and you can share the like the tips and the strategies to help them uh, get on the other side faster and less pain painlessly or more painlessly. So give me some examples of how that comes into play. What kind of a mess would could translate into a mission? Well, I mean, I have one client that she uh, shared her story in one of my books because she lost over 100 pounds. Um, and she realized that that was her calling is to help other people lose weight as well. And she has, she did go on a, a quite of a journey to do certain things to actually figure out her purpose. Um, but she started doing actually physical training and then she transitioned into a mindset coach because even though her clients were getting healthier, they were still backsliding because of the mindset stuff. So now she's an international speaker and she's a uh, kind of a mindset coach. I don't know if she would call herself a mindset coach, but she works with people on the the the, the behind, be, between the ear challenges that they're having to make sure that um, she that the combination of her 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 strategies and her mindset work are helping them uh, lose weight and, and keep it off. Cool. Yeah. So we talked about divorce. Maybe that that could be a focus for someone. Who had gone through a messy divorce and wants to help people get through the, the trauma of that or how to figure out what to do next in their life. I guess that would be an example. Sure. Divorce, um, illnesses, uh, bankruptcy. Um, I mean, I have one client who didn't herself, she, herself, she didn't have um, this problem, but one of her kids had a problem with um like gastrointestinal issues, right? And so she, as a mom, and as being having a PhD as well, so she was in the medical arena. Um, she 
she she didn't treat her son, but she you know knew the language that the doctors were were saying, and she she learned how to treat her son and all of the other things that went into it to kind of support what the doctors were uh, prescribing for her son. And so now she is kind of focused on that, and she helps other people as well now get to the point where they don't have to be running to the John and wherever they go, where is the bathroom, right? Because I've never dealt with that, but a lot of her clients have severe uh, problems and they can't go places without having a bathroom nearby. And that really is a debil debilitating situation. And so she's taken the mess from somebody she knew and turned that into her mission to help other people get over that problem as well. So that's just one example. So when you're working with clients and, and you're starting them on that pro this process, what's the first thing that you address with them? How do you how do you get them clear on what is their mess and how could that translate into their mission? Yeah, well, so, I mean, there's a lot of different, um, it really kind of starts with their story um, and not everybody's story is related to their business specifically. So it's, you know, right now my divorce story wouldn't be the story that I would use to connect with my ideal clients. However, we all have multiple stories and we need to use the story in the season of your business that you feel would um, be the most, uh, what do I want to say, like resonate the most with your ideal client. And so using that story is what is the key to help you connect with your ideal clients, attract them, and create more loyalty with them. And so when you use that story, that's kind of the first step. Um, the next step is to really define who your uh, I mean, it's, the next step in building your business is really to find who that ideal client is, because sometimes it's really hard for us to narrow that down. We want to help everybody. But when we help everybody, we're not being as loud as we can in the marketplace and our message is watered down and it just makes it hard for us to build our business. So, you know, getting really clear on that, I think, is maybe not necessarily the very first step, but is an important step in making sure that our businesses. Um, are going to be successful. Otherwise, we just are kind of like, we're like one little, it's it's like a general doctor. There's so many general doctors out there, but if somebody's looking for brain surgery, they're going to go to the brain surgeon. So you want to be the brain surgeon of your uh, specific industry or niche so that way people will come to you and you're not out there screaming and yelling, come work with me, because that doesn't work for anybody. And I like the way you put that with with the brain surgeon because the brain surgeon is going to make more money yep. he's going to be in more demand he she yep. is going to be in more demand yep the respect factor is there yep the trust factor is there yeah you may not like the guy or girl they may have a lousy personality or bedside manner but their skill set you know yep. that's what you go for sometimes and you can be more, more selective. And I'm not saying brain surgeons are selective on, oh, I don't like you. I'm gonna not going to work with you. But they're selective in the, in the respect that they want to make sure that the patient has the problem that they can fix. And so that's really important for us as businesses is to only take our ideal clients or the people that we know we can get results for because that is, a I feel, one of the biggest problems in the coaching industry right now or that coaches are just saying yes to anybody and everybody. And there are a lot of people paying for coaching services that aren't getting results. And so we want to make sure that we know who our ideal client is so we can focus our energy and our teaching and our resources and everything we have so that way our clients are just knocking it out of the ballpark as opposed to just a bunch of people that are spending money and not getting anywhere. Just like if you have an issue in your brain, you go to a brain surgeon, not a cardiologist. Correct. Right? Correct. Yeah. And, and also, as you grow your business, your business may shift from one specialty into another over time. Yeah, it can. Absolutely, it can. Because as you continue to uh, refine your ideal client um, and you refine your craft, uh, you may discover that maybe that wasn't the right path, or you niche up even further uh, to be basically, you know, just evolve, right? Because we're all evolving. And just because you're spending a year doing one thing, that doesn't mean you can't have it evolve a different direction and have your client, you know, have your focus grow with you, who you grow as a person. Cool. Yeah, I, 
I, uh, obviously, again, I, I seem to attract people who think the same way I do. But there you go. But yeah. there are so many people, and I'm going to mention healers because I work with a lot of younger healers as a mentor. And it's and it can be challenging to get them to focus on a specific segment of the people that they can help, at least for a time, right? Yeah. So they can hone their skills and become the expert in that. Because, oh, but but I can help them, and I can help them, and I can help no. them. Well, yeah, you can. And they're chasing shiny objects, right? And, you know, when we build a successful business, we want to build it in a way that we can scale it. Because by when we scale our business, it allows us to help more people, have more free time, and, of course, make more money. But we can't scale a business if we're constantly creating new things, Right. But if we have one core program, one funnel, one message, and we're just sharing it out there in the world so much that not only our audience knows what we do, but they know we, what we do so well that if the opportunity comes up and somebody needs what we have, they'll be like, oh, I know Christy. She helps people, blah, 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 blah. Right. And that's what we want is we want to build our business in a way that we are referable, that anybody can know what we do and in a sentence or two explain to other people and sometimes when i talk to new entrepreneurs they can't even explain themselves what they do let alone have a message that's so powerful and so strong that other people can explain it for them i'm looking at all the pictures behind you and yeah. i'm guessing that some of those might be books that you have something to do with you yeah. got you've published a lot of books haven't you uh, we have, yeah. So we started a publishing division of our business 11 years ago. And so we've done 12 co-authored books under the Overcoming Mediocrity brand. We have produced a ton of co-authored books for other clients who want to have a co-authored book for their brand. And we've helped a lot of our clients go on to write their own books. So. And I'm guessing some of those go back to the power of story that you power were story. that you yeah. were talking about earlier. Yeah, story and strategies, you know. And a lot of times people share their stories to leave a legacy too. It's not always around business, um, but generally that's the majority. I would say about ninety percent of the people I work with they're sharing their stories for business. The very first book I wrote was just because. I didn't want all the information to go to waste. Mm -hmm. That sounds weird, but I'd lived my life with migraines and I was the guinea pig for the medical profession mm -hmm. and I had good specialists and bad specialists and I had reactions to medication and I had it all just sitting in papers that no one would ever see. And I'm like, well, then why did I even remember all this stuff? Why did I write it down? If nobody's going to get the benefit from it. Right. You know? Absolutely. So there's power in actually telling a story, whatever it is. It wasn't to grow my business. It was just to get information out yep. there in case somebody legacy. needed it. You know? The legacy story, right? It's You're sharing it to just help others. Now, since then, I've done other stuff. Some of it's just fun stuff. But, you know, yeah. the first one was the hardest to get sometimes to, to wrap your head around actually publishing something that people can see your thoughts. That can be scary sometimes. It's very scary. It's totally because you have to be vulnerable, especially when we're sharing our stories. It's easier to share technical information, but people don't learn as well through that. They learn better through stories, even if it's not necessarily our story, it's other people's stories. But when we're sharing our story, that kind of, it's it's like running outside naked, right? It's it, it's being vulnerable and transparent. And it's sometimes very uncomfortable, especially the first time you've done it. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about strategies that you might use with some of your clients on profitizing their purpose. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's kind of a loaded question. Um, I will share one of the strategies that, um, you know, we're working on with our clients around story. And, well, and through our coaching is uh, leveraging um, automations and AI. 
Huh? So we have a, I, I kind of created, kind I created a little chat bot to help people write their stories. Um, and I have another little um, chat bot to help people write their signature offer. And so the whole world of AI is amazing. Um, and especially if you know how to use it and how to give it the directions to help you the best it can. And so it has been opening up just worlds of ideas and clear directions for me and my clients. And it's just been really neat to uh, kind of just dive into that space. And it continues to evolve. So every once in a while, there's even more updates. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so I'm using it a lot where at first when I'm like, oh, who needs AI? I don't need that. But the more you learn how to use it, it just is, it's just very powerful. I've seen some pretty cool, pretty cool things that people have done with AI. Yeah. It's super cool. Yeah. I typically only use it for like writing stuff, you know, or giving me ideas on things. Um, you just using my words to to come up with other ways of presenting things. So I guess I'm I'm looking at it more from a technical point than the creative point of view. Yeah. So yeah. I guess I need to explore that some more. There's so many things you can do with it. I think it's uh almost an endless opportunity of, of different things we can use it for. Talk about high ticket strategies. Yeah. How you would lead your clients in those areas. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make is they feel that they are not equipped to start out or at least think about high ticket. They think, oh, I have to wait a good four or five years before I get to the point where I can charge that. And, and that is true. You're not going to start right away with high ticket. However, if you build your roadmap with that high ticket program in mind and you build your, basically what I help people do is create the beta program of that high ticket that doesn't have all of the bells and whistles, but it still creates the perfect client journey. And so if we have our ideal client in mind and we know their ideal journey to get from point A to point Z, and we design everything in our business around that journey path, whether it be the lead magnet, whether it be the step-by-step -step methodology that we teach, uh, whether it be the partnerships that we uh, bring together in our business, the joint ventures, we need to bring people that have uh, businesses that solve the problem of our ideal client before they need us. And we need to have joint venture partners that can solve the problem of our clients after they're done working with us. And just really recognizing that journey map and we can't do that if we're not clear in our ideal client. That's why that's one of the one of the first most important steps is to get clear on that idea um, of who our ideal client is. Figure out that journey map and then um, build everything in support of that um, and not get bogged down with a bunch of courses. I, I know that's what I did. I have so many courses that did focus on so many things, right? But people can get information anywhere, especially now with chat GPT, you know, who needs my course on how to write a book, right? There's so many ways for people to write books now that my course that I created that was amazing that helped a ton of people is almost obsolete. And so if we're creating all of these different resources for all of these different people, because we want to help everybody, then that's stalling our progress and getting to the point where we do have a high ticket um, and being able to really make the most impact in the, in the lives of our clients. So I've heard you say this several times. So I'm going to make an assumption, not a, it's not even an assumption. Um, losing focus can be a barrier to growth. Oh, lack of clarity, lack of accountability, uh, lack of uh, focus, right? Not getting distracted by the shiny objects. I mean, there's just so many things that will keep us back. Fear, right? We create sometimes our own obstacles because of fear, because of self-sabotage, because of uh, feeling that we don't, 
you know, like the imposter syndrome of we're not good enough or whatever that may be. I mean, we could have the most successful strategies that could get somebody from point A to Z extremely fast. And if, but if you don't have the right mindset, you're going to not stay on the path and you're going to keep crashing off into the gullies, right? You're not going to stay on that, on the road. You're going to just keep going into ditches. And that's the worst part of not working with a coach is we end up by getting in way too many ditches and it just frustrates us. It uh, makes us spend more time and more money, which resources are, are from, you know, our time resources, one of the most valuable resources we have. Um, but having a coach to keep us on point is really, I think, um, the key to any business successful, successful business. I, I do a lot of Tony, Tony Robbins stuff. And one of the things he pushes really hard is 20% of your growing your business is technical being clear on the technical stuff. The other 80 is psychological. Yeah. Getting out of your own way, totally. being, being clear on what it is you want and who can help you get there and what strategic action you need to take and what mindset stuff you need to work through. Yep. Absolutely. I agree with that. You have a podcast. I do. Talk to me about your podcast. Oh, yay. Well, we were on the podcast cruise together. <laughs> so yes, we have a podcast, which is super cool. And I can't wait to have you be a guest on mine. And oh, mine is you. called Mastery Unleashed. And guess what it's all about? Stories and strategies to fuel the success of my audience. And so I bring on guests that have amazing stories. And they partner that story with tips or wisdom and resources. Uh, so our audience could not only be inspired by those stories, but they can be educated and learn uh, through the tips that are shared. And all of my clients have the opportunity to share a free gift. So our audience um, can go to our gift vault and grab that gift from that guest or any of the other guests that have honored our gift vault with some amazing resources. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so, well, I, normally I do this later, but so do you have a free gift for our listeners, maybe? I do. <laughs> it's funny how that just fed right into there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now um, I am working on a new gift uh, for um, people to be able to write their story using AI prompts, my story creation super prompt. So it's not quite ready yet. However, I do have my story selling made easy system that once you get that, I will be sure that you get the notification of anybody that si signs up to get that free gift um, will get the notification and get the, the prompt because it's an incredible um, expediter in the process of writing your story. And so, yeah, it's a story made easy system. It has my framework. It has some uh, little like micro courses on uh, things that go along with the workbook to help anybody that is going through the workbook and they're not exactly clear on one of the steps, it kind of goes through that. And it's just been uh, kind of the framework I've been using with my clients for 11 years. It's evolved quite a lot over the years, but um, I find that it works really well and they find that it works really well for them too. Cool. Yeah. So what about your business lights you up the most? I, I, getting successful texts or messages or you know of a client that just landed a client or had some sort of win like every time my clients get a win i feel like i got the win and sometimes i celebrate their wins more than my wins <laughs> i don't know why i just i just really feel that every time they do something well um that just is super exciting for me and i love to see how they just um they just kind of like your it's like your children like when they do something great when they ride their bicycle for this first time you feel proud and i feel proud of my clients when they you know achieve these amazing milestones in their business here's another off the wall question okay profitize your purpose yeah what led you to create that and trademark it ooh um I don't know what led that. Just, I, you know, I'm one of these people that have over the years bought hundreds of domains, had Me too. hundreds of <laughs> book titles, right? 
hundreds of program names, um, but that was all on my journey to figure out my purpose. I didn't like, I, again, everything I've done has happened for a reason. Um, but at a certain point, I realized that I wanted my mission to continue on the path of helping these people that realize their mess became their mission and they want to monetize it. And I just like the whole uh, point of helping people profitize their purpose. And I don't know, I just came up with it. And I didn't even ask Chat GPT to come up with it. <laughs> I, came up with, I came up with that on my own. <laughs> Yeah, I even do that with my clients sometimes when they're trying to figure out something. I'm like, well, just a minute here. Let me see what ChatGPT says. Yes. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, the, yeah. That is the tools that we begin to rely on so readily, you know? It's like, I know. I know. Yeah. And like yesterday after after church, like I had this great idea, right? And I went to lunch and I had the great idea and I pull out my phone and I like go through chat GPT on my phone and it really helped me where before I would make a bunch of notes. Now I kind of was able to kind of work through some of these ideas and know that it it's there on my thread. And so I just, it's as a creative and idea person, it's been amazing because sometimes I'll pick those ideas up but sometimes I don't, and that's okay, because I've given myself the 24-hour rule that I don't act on anything unless I've been able to percolate on it for a while um, and just, you know, pray about it, uh, make sure that it's a real idea, not just one of these shiny object ideas, you know? That's interesting. You gave yourself the 24-hour rule. Yeah, I give it to myself for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it even goes a little bit farther, you know, after even 24 hours, if I don't have interest, I just let it go. But if I still have interest, I still am not going to act on it unless I really, really feel that other things are al in alignment with that. And I just wait to see how the universe responds or how God responds and how everything in my life responds. Because I have way too many times spent a lot of energy on things that didn't turn out into anything. So... I have to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of it, though, comes back to learning yourself and being comfortable with what you need to work correctly for you. Right. right? Yep. Be because someone else might be a immediate yes, immediate no. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of those people who has to think it through. I don't have a 24 hour rule, but there are, they're very, there is a limited number of items that I was like an immediate yes. The decision is yes. Yeah. But if, if it's a, well, this kind of wishy-washy thing, I'm going to contemplate. I'm going to explore. I'm going to decide, choose to decide later after I have more information. Right. Yeah. And I totally resonate with that as well. And I am one of these people that no matter what I decide, I make a decision and I make that decision right. And I heard that somewhere years ago and absolutely right. But I also know that sometimes making a decision out of an emotion is not the best thing to do. And I have been very successful at making decisions and make that decision right. Um, but sometimes those decisions weren't necessarily in alignment with my big purpose. And so even though there was value in it, it wasn't the highest value that I could have created for myself or for, for, the, for others, right? And I think this is an, in, uh, it's an important thought process for our listeners to pay attention to in their own world. Trying to grow a business, there are so many opportunities and everyone has just the perfect thing to grow your business yes. and to make you profitable. But is it really? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've worked with some very expensive coaches who knew nothing about my business and I benefited nothing from it, you know, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. That's they kept trying to push me into a mold that didn't fit my business, but they weren't up front and didn't say, well, I don't really know anything about your business. So they weren't the right fit for me. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll live and learn, you know. I kind of made one of my taglines be, so you don't pay for no results again. Um, because I and I've so met so many people that I've seen go almost bankrupt or spend their you know life savings with a coach that spent more energy trying to close them than they did actually helping them. Yep. And I, there's just so many coaches out there that do that. And then they collect the money and they basically don't take ownership. They think, well, that person made the decision. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but what did you do to influence them to make that decision? And did, 
do you take any ownership to make sure that they are even the right fit for your program? I mean, we want to qualify people just because they have a credit card that doesn't, that shouldn't qualify them. We want to, we should, if we're integrous, be qualifying people based on the fact that if we're a brain surgeon, that that person has a brain tumor, right? Not, they have a heart condition. So it's, I think that is one of the biggest problems in, in our industry or the, the coaches that don't care. They just, all they care about is the credit card. Yep. So anyway, if you're growing your business, just pay attention to what feels right inside. Yeah. And if you have to do the, the, the positives and the negatives on a yep. little T-chart on a blank piece of paper, do whatever it takes to analyze, is this the right fit for my business at this time? Right. And, and from a logical perspective, not an emotional. And sometimes a no is not a no forever. It's just no, not right now. Not right now. Right. Or sometimes those offers create an awareness that, yeah, okay, we do need that, but now let's find the right person. Yes. So. What happens are people buy, they, they want to buy their dreams and they are willing to invest in their dreams, but they don't necessarily invest in the right dream maker. And so it makes it really hard because when entrepreneurs invest in their dreams and it doesn't come true, they feel so deflated and they're super capable and they have anybody, I believe anybody can create anything they want if they bring the right person around them to help them. But when they keep failing, it just makes it harder for them because then their mindset just becomes even a bigger enemy than it was initially. But everything is possible. So we want to end upbeat here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So talk to yeah. me about branding. About branding. Um, well, I mean, I, I think that's what is really important about making sure we're clear on our genius zone or our mastery zone, um, because then we can understand what makes us different and unique and make sure our brand is uh, in alignment with that. So we're not just like everybody else, right? So how can we uh, create a brand that is powerful, impactful, and makes us, sets us apart from our competition? And our story is a big part of that. I really believe it. There we go. That's what yeah. I <laughs> Story brand. So he hasn't read the book. It's awesome. Uh, there you go. So she has like gobs of books out there if you guys are looking for more reading material on, on this subject. Well, that's not my book. Story Brand is not my book, but it's a great book. Oh, Story Brand. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got his stuff too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's he's one of the courses, that the millions of courses that I have ah, taken, right? There you go. So you yeah. could probably teach all of this as well. So <laughs> <laughs> let's say I have a lot of random knowledge floating along around inside my head that comes out at the most unusual times, unexpected yeah. times, you know? That's it. That's the, the um, benefit and downfall of being a uh, personal development junkie and, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say coach because not everybody resonates with being a coach, but uh, mission-driven entrepreneurs that are dedicated to helping others, we constantly are learning so we can keep helping and keep making a difference, which is great, but sometimes our brain is like, oh my gosh, all this information, but the more you learn and the more you become seasoned in your craft it just everything just starts flowing out of you when it should and that's that's when you know you're on the right path well just like this lifelong learner thing i took some courses on podcasting two years before i ever had any desire to be a podcast host yeah you yeah. know so you never know what is gearing you up for the next leg of your journey correct correct i agree i agree i don't think um f and so this is a challenge, right? Is we shouldn't be getting distracted from our mission and learning how to do a podcast if we're not becoming a podcast teacher or a podcast expert. However, in order for us to outsource it and bring our team around us, it is important for us to have a basic understanding of what we're doing so we can direct them in the right way and and keep ownership of our business of 
keeping ownership of, of our business and keeping control of the outcome of that specific endeavor. So good for you for learning it. Cause I know a lot of people bark on the journey of starting a podcast and they just hire somebody right off the bat. They spend a ton of money and they don't necessarily get in the weeds for a little bit. And then you can tell, I mean, you can tell that their podcast is like canned and it doesn't represent them as humans. And I will tell you that doing the technical part of the podcast is one of those things that sucks the life out of me. So I do have a team that does all this. Oh, me too. <laughs> me too. I, you know, I'm, I, I love the conversations. I get to, I, because I'm an introvert, I don't have, you know, I, a lot of people around me all the time. So I enjoy these types of interactions. I really do. And I try to gear them so that the people listening get some good nuggets, some learning out of it so that when they hit branding issues, they have a source that they can go to to explore more. Or when they hit, well, I don't really know what my story is. They've got a source now, a resource, someone they can go to to get more information about how can I get my story to create my brand, right? That yeah. happen. So ho hopefully it's working out for the listeners. They seem to enjoy it. So Yeah. Oh, well, it's because you're clear on who your ideal client is. I mean, that was one of the first things we talked about. You were very clear. This is who my audience is. Yeah. So you make sure you made sure our conversation today was in alignment with things that you feel they would find value in. And so that's great. I mean, if you didn't know who they were, then you'd have a whole conglomerate of guests and then your listeners might not stay connected with you. And that is one of the things that I've talked to so many newer podcasters who didn't get clear on their guests. And so they just had all these random people on. And what, what what's the point of your story other than just random conversations? Well, yeah, I want this and I want that. Well, what does your listener want? Right. right. So. Yeah. Yep. So for mine, the majority of my guests are all focused on um, business resources, um, business tools, um, and strategy all around entrepreneurs and small business owners. However, every once in a while, I'll bring somebody in that has a unique story that is um, more universal. Like I had somebody on there, her story was all around human trafficking and what she built for that. And, um, you know, a lot of different things every once in a while would come in because it's just stuff that we as humans would resonate with. Um, however, the majority of our guests have are kind of like you, right? We're, we're really, I'm really clear on my ideal audience and I am bringing in guests that would serve them. And on that note, if you would like to get in touch with Christy, her website is christyrafino.com, but there's also masteryunleashedcoaching.com. Yes. Right? And a million places on social media and all of the links will be down below. Just click on the link. You can find her on almost any platform out there, I think. Yeah, I'm awesome. I'm not a TikToker. <laughs> yeah, me either. My nephew keeps sending me things on TikTok and I watch them in the browser rather than opening TikTok because that would just be one more account to keep track of. So uh, I know. Uh, yeah. um, also, Christy mentioned a free gift and the link for that is below. Also, just click on the link. It'll take you right to her vault. <laughs> yeah. Right? Sure, yeah. Or it'll, no, it'll take you to Story Selling Made Easy System. Yes. There we go. But I'm sure the vault is available somewhere, especially if you listen to her podcast. You're correct. Yeah. Mastery Unleashed podcast would be where they could get our show and get connected with the gift vault. Cool. Yeah. So we're coming close to the end of our time here. Is there any final thoughts you'd like to leave with our listeners, either about something we've already discussed or just something that popped into your head that mm -hmm. you think might be valuable? Yeah. Um, final thoughts. Hmm. All I could say is when I was asked initially to share my story, I did not realize the impact it would help it would have on my life and the lives of others now for me personally being able to share my story was a immense growing experience it allowed me to kind of like unpack some of the baggage um the first time i wrote my story i, I couldn't print it because it was like 
very venomous, right? I got a lot of stuff out and it was very therapeutic and it was great, but I had to completely rewrite it and make it to be a little bit more about the lesson as opposed to the um, payback, if you want to say. <laughs> um, so for me, the experience was a learning journey that allowed me to expand into something and bigger, bigger and better. And so even if you don't write your story, I really encourage your audience if they feel that they have something in their life that was a traumatic experience, even if they've lived through it and they, they feel they're okay, uh, write about it, right? Like get it out, write it out, pen it out, um, because it is a way for you to just process on a level and have a outcome that you can't even like I did not I had no idea how it was going to um, help me and through the years I, I've seen it as well with my clients you know they they feel that they want a book they want to share their story and going through the process was really difficult right a lot of resistance they wanted to do it but yet they were struggling but when they got through it it was just like they were free and so it opened up their doors to other things. I like to say it helps you write your next better story. So I just encourage anybody that's out there to just recognize the power of your story. Um, even if it's just spending a couple hours journaling about it, it's just a really great way for you as a human with emotions, be able to process it in a way that you can get out on the other side and, um, and just grow. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Jean. Yeah. So I want to thank our listeners for tuning in yet again for another episode um, with my great conversation with Christy Rafino. I had so much fun. Um, this is Jean Border, your host with the Focus Practical Dreamers Journey podcast. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Focused Practical Dreamers Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Remember to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey.